Hi guys, Brett Parker here, Handicapped Scratch. Today I'm down here at Formby Golf Club uh, and I have a putter lesson. Specifically, I have a lesson with Mike Kansky. Um, he's part of the Harold Swash uh, putting uh, team, if you like. Uh, and I'm going to get a putter lesson. I've never had a putter lesson before. <clears throat> I've never been had a putter fit in. I've never been taught to actually how to put. So I'm really interested to see how he's going to change that aspect of my game so how he's going to um, look at it what things he's going to say about my current putting style is he going to suggest a change grip change stroke change uh, the actual putter change grip change like on actually grip on the uh, club i'm interested to see one what he's going to do and two is it going to make a difference now, I've heard some great things about Mike Kansky. So many people have recommended him to me. A few people on Twitter, which thank you very much for those people that have recommended him. Um, Dan Whitaker, obviously my coach, he recommended him as well. He, I've heard some great things about him. He's worked with some of the, the best players out there. So I'll put a description down below to his page. He's worked with some absolutely incredible players. So uh, I see no reason why he can't improve my game. Um I'm not going to film the whole thing. Obviously, I don't want to just turn up with the camera and point it in his face. So I'm just going to stick a camera in the corner. I've asked for his permission for that. Um, and just kind of film the overview of what of my lesson. Now, my lesson is a two-hour lesson. I'm not just going to stick a two-hour video at the end of uh, this. I will cut some bits out and kind of just uh, show highlights of my lesson. Um, I'll then review the lesson in a, either a couple of weeks or at the end of this video um, and kind of just see whether or not it's making a difference whether or not my money is going to work i really do think this is going to be a big change for me putting is my weakest part of my game without fail i think my scrambling would be better my up and downs would be better if my putting was better so i think it is going to make a big difference but let's stay tuned and uh i'll i'll see what happens so you've got that again and then 10 puts 10 straight puts yeah we'll get the breaking puts after this so whenever you're ready Oh, yeah, okay. and by the way, if you normally line the ball up or kind of put it down a certain way. I don't. I did, but then I found that I'm actually missing more than yeah. I was making, so uh, took it off. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, um, just... What I tend to do now is essentially just get to a point where I can't see anything on the ball. Okay. And then, but yeah, there's a bit of fire if you know what I mean. Okay. A bit bright. And then, <laughs> just for the first sort of half dozen puts, I'm going to cut to a bit of video, so yeah, whenever you're ready, fire away. So all in all, did that feel a decent line for deadweight speed? Yeah, I think that's safe. It's a kind of safe line. Yeah. It's not an aggressive like I'm gonna hold the pull. No, it's cozy. Yeah, from this hold. distance, like with my tendencies, I'd be almost like it off here. Like I wouldn't even go. Wow. <laughs> okay. That would be that last part. That would be like that's a successful part. I'll just have to leave that. Okay. So it's kind of yeah. yeah. Not embarrassing. No, it's kind of yeah. I'll take the two up from here. So I mean, on this swing, okay. I just feel like. Which is not a great thing to admit, but I'll be honest. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Do you know what? Like, I think you see that a lot, really, with players who the strategy is to, to not embarrass themselves and for yeah. it just to be, well, it's okay, it's fine to miss there, but I think. I think my worry is if I go four or five foot past, I don't make enough of them coming back. Yeah, I, I would have thought, I was going to say what you like inside a six foot, but you're obviously you're not really bad. But no. Like inside two or three foot, I fancy something because I'm, I'm confident enough to just hit the line and just yeah. hit the ball. But then if you go four or five foot, then I'm like, this could break, this not going to break, I can't hit it too hard. Like, so from here, I'm just, just like, like, get it within a foot, then I'll take the ball. Yeah. To get you to scratch yeah. or low, it's not going to be more aggressive, hasn't it? Yeah, of course it 
Right, jump off the green a sec. Yeah. We'll swap it around the other way. I'll test the line again. I want you to walk up, I'm going to stand in the way of the target. Just want you to set up to that ball as if you were going to put. When I stand out of the way and like reveal the arrow versus kind of the target and their, their degrees of error based on a 13 foot uh, put distance. Yeah. I just want you to tell me where the arrow projects to. Is it right? Is it left? Is it at the hole? Um, so almost if the ball was to kind of follow that arrow and, and work down that line, does it? where does it look relative to the hole? Okay. So step up, don't need the sensor on. So pop the balloon behind the ball. And then take your setup, so both hands on the club, if you're ready to go. If I move out of the way, what does that look like to you? That arrow? Like left centre, so like left edge. Okay, left edge. Okay, so the first half of the lesson was essentially just collecting data. It was um, trying to get you know swings from straight putts, swings from breaks from left to right, right to left, um, and we kind of gathered data on SamLab and uh, the other pieces of equipment that Mike had, and then this was the results. So, if we take a look at the uh, uh, analysis, shall we say, um, from down the line, you can quite clearly see from there that. On the way back, it kind of goes from, if I can uh, get my tools, kind of goes out that way and then comes back this way. So uh, now that I've shown you that, if I get rid of that and then show you the pot again, hopefully without, it's kind of hard to see. <laughs> But it's a clear motion in the sense that I go out that way and that way. And it'll show up in the data uh, in a little bit that I can show a bit more clearly. So that's down the line. Uh, from face on, um, not nothing too much, in, but just general, quite a lot of movement, a bit of almost sway back. Through impact, I kind of tilt back the way. So I kind of uh, tilt that way. Um, if I can show you, I kind of move away and move all my body weight kind of into my right foot and away from the target as opposed to staying over the top of the ball. From lower down, um, it's quite evident here how I go back this way and then over the other way. Um, My first movement in this is basically to just take it, you know, take it that way. Um, and then it's quite incredible how much it goes over to the left. So what I'm essentially doing is I'm almost hitting a little cut. So I'm creating ball spin that will, will go with a cut. Um, if you imagine yourself trying to get the ball to start left and move right and how you'd, you'd, get, you know, how you'd throw the ball out of your hand to, to get that motion, I'm almost creating that with my stroke, um, which is not a great thing to be doing in your swing. Um, from above, a couple of things uh, Mike noted. Um, the shoulders, you know, they're fairly level, good alignment. Feet, again, fairly good alignment, although my lines aren't straight. Um, but he did note that my ear alignment is quite, you know, pointing in that direction as opposed to being level with my feet. Um, so that was something he noted. It wasn't something he was immediately looking to change, but uh, definitely said that it's something to um, keep an eye on. 
Um, and same how you know, if you draw a straight line down my back, which that's not, um, my head's kind of off, but then my back's fairly neutral and straight. But there were some positives in there in the sense that my alignment was pretty good in my shoulders and uh, feet, and I was quite solid around the base as well. From this view, you can really notice how much my elbow goes this way and creates the club to come this way as well. If uh, I play that back again, you kind of see how much that elbow wants to come on the inside, which then forces the club to come from that inside as well, uh, to come over the top and to the left. So let's have a look at the data. So. Um, one thing that is important, my timing is pretty good, my consistency is reasonable, and my overall rating wasn't terrible, uh, but it was the things that I was actually doing in my swing that were terrible, let's say. <laughs> um, so my aim to start with, I'm aiming 2.4 degrees open, now this isn't just on a single data, this is over say 10 or so, um, and consistently 2.74, 2.26, yeah, I'm, I'm consistently over the 2 mark, sometimes as, even as high as close to 3. Um, so my aim isn't great, my consistency on my aim, so I always aim 2 degrees open, is, is good. I'm 97% accurate on aiming right, which is a good in the sense that I've, uh, you know, I've built it as a consistency, but it's bad in the sense that I'm starting aim by aiming right. Um, moving on, uh, direction at the face at impact, so at impact, generally on average, I was 1.3 degrees open at impact. Now, again, uh, oh, not over a single sample size, it was you know, multiple uh, different shots. Um, that one was a particularly bad one, but generally, you know, I, I am always open left. I was never, in any of the shots that I took, aiming the club left. Um, now, the consistency in which I did this, again, pretty high. I, you know, I'm, I'm good at putting in terms of the consistency I was doing. It's the things that I'm doing that aren't good. Put a path. Um, now, if we've seen this in a uh, club swing massively right to left, um, you know, it, it, it's a very much over the top notion, that kind of negative thought that you'd get on a full swing and, and do exactly the same in a port on a swing. So again, consistency is not terrible, uh, but they're never, not one of them was, was ever coming from that draw motion, if you like, from, you know, right to, uh, you know, from the up to the top. I don't know how to describe that, but going to the right, um, everyone was always going left of the path um, and, and by quite severely as well, four degrees left. Um, my arc, so arc on the swing, it's always started going on outside of the direction line and then kind of coming back in and then going way left. So every single one did the same. Again, it, it was consistent. I could repeat that and I could repeat the motion over and over again. It's just not a good motion to, 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 to do. A very, very positive thing that we did see, even with all these um, kind of problems buckled in, my impact location was very, very good. I could consistently hit the centre of the club, I could consistently do it over and over and over again despite these path problems, the open face at impact. Um, and basically what I've done is I've trained myself to to do these things and I know exactly how my club's going to go, it's going to go from the out, come from the inside and go left. So I can repeat the same thing over and over and over again. The problem is it doesn't get results. So uh, let's move on, let's have a look at um, myself just after uh, Mike's kind of explained it to me, he's going to explain my new setup, my new grip. Um, let's have a look at some of the practice drills we did. Okay, so down the line after um, all my, my differences. So as you can see, my grip's completely changed. Um, my club is now standing a lot more upright as opposed to the toe being up like it was in the past. Um, and it just looks a completely